Space weather this week continues to be a bit on the stormy side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have a coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the past couple days. It's been sending us some fast solar wind, and along with a stealthy solar storm, all of that managed to bump us up to G2 levels for a short bit back on the 27th. Now we're beginning to calm down from that fast solar wind, and we have yet another set of coronal holes. This set is the same set that gave us a G2 level storm back in early September, and it looks like it's poised to do it again. We actually had a uh, solar storm launch back on the 28th from region 3110, and this, this solar storm looks like it's mainly going to the east of of Earth, but uh, NOAA models show that the solar storm might actually clip us. So right around the first, about midday on the first, we're expecting this uh, the solar storm to kind of clip us along with that fast solar wind. So once again, we may be up to G2 levels with storming. Not quite sure it's going to be that intense, but we definitely will find out shortly. Now also, as we take a look at the far-sided sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole sitting around mid-disc. Mid along with region 3110, and that should get you kind of anchored a little bit. But look to the east limb in Stereo's view. You see a lot of brightening in the north. This is from old regions uh, 3094 and, and 3098. These are regions that were bit, were flare players back uh, about a month ago, and it looks like they've survived their, their far-sighted passage. So we definitely will be expecting the uh, solar flux to stay boosted, and we're going to expect that radio blackouts will still be on the menu. You. Now switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we watch the solar storms being launched, you can see that first one, the one in the front, that's the larger of the two. Even though it looks like it's coming out mainly to the east of Earth, as you watch it come out, you can tell we're going to actually get clipped by this solar storm right around the 1st, probably midday to mid-afternoon mid on the 1st. And this is actually going to happen right about when that fast solar wind from those coronal holes is going to uh, start hitting Earth as well. So, Aurora photographers, this is good news for you. It definitely means we could be getting some decent aurora show, possibly down into mid-latitudes. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders, this is not good news for you because we're dealing with Hurricane Ian. So all of you that are dealing with the hurricane watch nets, please understand that you're going to deal with radio blackouts potentially on Earth's day side, but then Right around October 1st, when this storm hits, you're going to be also dealing with radio propagation issues on Earth's night side as well. So please take these, uh, these matters into consideration when you're planning your communications for all that first responding you're doing, as well as realizing that GPS might have some issues during the solar storm. For more details on this week's space weather, including how that coming solar storm might affect communications during Hurricane Ian. Come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com.